Welcome to Livestream Stars. I'm Ross Brand. This is a show where we feature talented broadcasters delivering high-quality content across live stream platforms. Livestream Stars is brought to you by LivestreamUniverse.com. Get your daily live stream update and show recommendations every morning in video form on our Facebook page at Facebook.com slash Livestream Universe. Couple of quick programming notes. Thursday, 7 p.m. Eastern, it's Ask the Expert. Debbie Wong, a career business and life coach, will be taking your questions about the coaching process and how people can benefit from it. And then on Friday at 1 p.m. Eastern, it's a special edition of Livestream Stars. Mark Rogers of ESPN joins me to talk about the upcoming football season um, and also what's involved in, been, in building and running um, a successful YouTube channel. You know Mark, of course, from behind the scenes, BTS Live with Marty McPadden. And next Monday, it's the summer season finale of Livestream Stars. We have Anthony Conklin, motivational keynote speaker and the man who interviewed Tony Robbins on Blab. And now to tonight's guest, David Vaughn is the founder of theprofitablelist.com, helping business owners grow their email list. He's experienced at producing video tutorials and hosting shows, including on Blab, and is up on the latest developments in tech and live streaming. On Blab, he gave himself the great tagline, a fairly unimportant person on an irrelevant platform. And so we welcome that man, David Vaughn. And now you're on a relevant platform. So you may be becoming a more important person. Uh, Fire Talk is really stepping it up. Yeah, no, I'm sorry. It's still irrelevant. <laughs> it's still irrelevant. Anything social is, is irrelevant. Um, All social media is relevant. Action is, is is what it is, and so and I'm still fairly unimportant. I'm waiting for this guy that you were saying was the guest tonight. Though. He, yeah, he, he sounded good, but for now you'll you'll just keep the seat warm. Yeah, uh, yeah, I'll hold the spot. Um, I promise I'll stop talking as soon as he shows up. Yeah. <laughs> All right, so let's get right into it. Instagram came out with its stories, much like Snapchat stories. Have you tried them? What do you think of them? Well, I, you know, so is it Snapgram? Is it, is it Insta, <laughs> is it Insta chat? Um, I, I, yes, I have tried it. Um, and, uh, boy, you know what? Facebook, if you can't do it, just sit there and copy it and paste it as your own. I mean, hmm. you know, video, the way the news feeds work. And now Instagram and Instagram stories. I mean, you know, it, it was first we got longer, what, 60 second videos and in, in Instagram. Right. So let's watch something longer. Um, and now you can actually have stories. I, You know, I'll tell you, it, it's an interesting and I'm, I'm still playing. With, I mean, it's brand new. It came out or it was introduced to the majority of people, I believe, last week in uh, the U.S. And, and, you know, you other countries out there who are pining for it. You'll get it soon enough. Um I was I was on the bandwagon, you know, I was like, oh my gosh, come on. There's already Snapchat, Snapchat matters, Snapchat lives matter. You know, I was all caught up in the, the whole thing. And I, then I started thinking about it. I was like, you know, there's there's a possibility because I mean really judged it. Well, you know, you can't do filters, you can't do this. Oh, it's got that, that's pretty neat, but you still can't do this. We're still limited to 10 seconds. And uh so I was really hard on it at first. I was like, this is just stupid. Um, and then I thought, you know, it's actually got a good possibility, a, a, a good, um, good potential, great potential, actually. Uh, and that's because I watched a, a few people's uh, stories. Um, Amy Porterfield, uh, who I've known for a long time, um, was one of the first ones. And <clears throat> I don't know if a lot of people are familiar with Amy Porterfield or not. Uh, she used to be uh, known very well for Facebook, uh, knowing how to work Facebook, Facebook ads and everything. Very successful in that. She used to work for Tony Robbins. Um, and then she started her own business. But anyway, I, she's she does a ton of online stuff. She's got a podcast. She does webinars. Um, she'll do videos every once in a while. But that's kind of not a lot. And you very rarely see Amy, just right. the raw Amy. She did a story, and, and of course, she was on camera. And I thought it was really, really good. She just gave us a little behind the scenes of her two offices. 
you know, because apparently one's not enough. Um, actually, one was a studio. Um, and I said, you know, now I see a little bit of great potential. Some behind the scenes, something a little bit different, catered to the people. And that's the biggest thing about anything social is that, uh, you know, too many times we sit there and, and want to. Um, uh, well, in fact, we were talking about it this morning. Uh, you know, I'll do a Snapchat and then I'll go over to Instagram. I'll do the exact same thing. And then I'll go over to Twitter and I'll do the exact same thing. And then Facebook Live and do the exact same thing and on and on and on. And and people get caught up in that and they don't work the platform's tool as it should be according to the platform. And you don't c cater to that community that you've got on there. Um, so while you may have an overall theme, the way you do it on Facebook or Instagram stories or Snapchat or Periscope or Firetalk or Blab or whatever. Um, it should be unique to those people. So don't just download your um, Snap and then post it to Instagram stories. Yeah. And, you know, Which is what some people few, obviously are doing so far. <laughs> there's a few people, yeah, because they miss the filters. You know, they're, 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 you know, they're caught up in what's already been out there. And they're not... You know, so they're like, well, they're pining they're for big it. on well, Snapchat and they want to get you really to go over to their Snapchat. So it's like, let me show right. you what I can do with Snapchat filters and stuff. Right. And that's the wrong approach to take. That's exactly the, the direction that I'm headed is that and it, it's, you know, it drives me crazy. It's like people, it's like if I had gone on Periscope right before this and I said, hey, listen, I'm getting ready to be on Fire Talk <laughs> over here and follow me around. <laughs> You know, what, what's the point of that? I mean, if I'm going to sit there and include Periscope, you know, we could do the uh, the the, sol the simulcasting, the multicasting that uh, some of the um, some people do. Some people do it really well. Most don't. Um, and I'm not a huge right. fan of it. Uh, I think it's too broadcasty. I, I think it's too um, cold. I think you're treating the platforms in a way that they're not really designed for, and you're really losing out. Um, now, if all you're doing is really a one-to-many type deal mm -hmm. anyway, uh, I, you know, then I guess it's okay. But you're missing out on the interaction. So either you have to be looking all over the place and addressing people as they come in, or you get people to help you out. You know, if you're going to stream to YouTube and you're going to stream to Facebook and you're going to be on Fire Talk and you're going to be on Periscope, have somebody there who can, uh, you know, kind of be a, a right. pseudo you. I so, mean, I anyway, think there's an advantage. That's a long answer to it. Yes, I've tried Instagram stories. Um, I do see that it has great potential. We'll I mean, I do think out. there's an advantage um, in terms of reaching people outside your inner circle and going to multiple networks, streaming from here, say, to YouTube, streaming to Facebook Live, things like that. Um, but for me, anyway, to do that, I'm not going to do that at the expense of the show for the people who are here watching it here and chatting here and, and the conversation that we're having and whatever. So unless I am able to do it in a way that isn't burdensome at all, and I know the quality is going to be good on those channels, I'd rather have a really good show here and then just repurpose it afterwards. And if I want to add exactly. a little production to it or whatever, I can always do that afterwards. I can always edit out some things and make it a little tighter broadcast. But um, for now, my, right. my, my concern is that this show be good for the people who are watching it here rather than the people who might stumble along on YouTube. But I do see the advantage to getting it to YouTube and Facebook live eventually um, maybe using Wirecast, which I have, I don't know, but I, I think that that ultimately is where I'm going to go, but I'm not at the point yet where I know that I can do it to where it won't be a distraction in doing it while I'm broadcasting and take away from the show. Well, anybody, anybody that's serious about broadcasting, uh, uh, doing live video, um, needs to stay away from YouTube, uh, not YouTube, Facebook. Sorry, YouTube. Sorry. Um, Facebook live video sucks. It is a horrible experience for the viewer. Um, and it's a pretty horrible experience for, for, people that are broadcasting, but a lot of people are just, I hear the arguments. They're just settling. Um, and I, I, you know, that's just. Well, wrong. I mean, here's the argument for going to Facebook, right? You've got tons of friends who don't even know 
that you've ever been on video. I mean, when you look at all your friends yep. that you have on Facebook compared to other places and people who you, who will see your post and your live video, um, one, you're providing another avenue for people who might be on a cell phone, whatever, and coming to this platform might be kind of complicated or difficult depending on their Wi-Fi and whatever. So maybe they just want to watch it on Facebook where they've already got the app open, whatever. But you're you're also giving other people a chance to find you. Now, whether any of those people will then come over to watch the show or they'll go, oh, cool, you're doing this, send you a note, and then... You, know, you won't see them again. I don't know. But that I guess that's an advantage of going to Facebook is that you do open up a chance that other people in your network who don't normally follow this stuff will catch it live and maybe say, let me go over to Fire Talk and join the chat. Of course, they could start chatting on Facebook. You can't keep up with the chat on Facebook. And then, you know, right. <laughs> I just... See, here's the here's the problem with that. And I hear that argument, too. Um. You are, uh, when you approach it in that sense, it, it's like you're a rudderless ship. You have no control um, over how things are going. You're just kind of going all willy-nilly about it. And you're not really being serious about it. And so if you're not being serious about it, and you're not being serious about, uh, you know, touching on one of the three E's, which is entertainment uh, or entertaining, educating, or empowering. Um, and helping serve the community that you serve, uh, you know, then why should they take you serious? You know, other than than what it is, um, you you can't deposit um, followers, likes, retweets, reposts, shares. All that stuff doesn't work. You 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 know, the <laughs> banks don't take it. I check every day, and I get the same answer every day. And I keep telling them I'm gonna keep checking. Because one of these days you are, and as soon as you are, I'm all over it with both feet. Um, and I'll retweet and share and post that out to everybody um, and be sure to cash in. Um, that's the importance of, of, of your list. And that's that's some place that, that we ignore, a lot of people ignore, um, because they, they don't know that they view the list incorrectly. Um, they don't view their list as uh, there's two numbers that, that or there's there's two symbols that go with a list. It's it's the number sign, number of subscribers, mm -hmm. and the dollar sign. Because mm -hmm. if you're in business, um, then right. you need to be making money. Now, if you have a list and you're not, you know, trying to build your list, uh, you know, try to build your business up and and uh, monetizing to use the word that I hate, but that's actually and just, just so people, monetizing. just so people, uh, you're not uh, just so business. people understand you're talking about your email list, your subscribers that you that either subscribe emails. at your website, or maybe they subscribe through a call to action button on your Facebook page or something like that. Or they subscribe through a call to action of you sitting right. there saying, Hey, listen, uh, I, you know, if you want the up to the minute, uh, you know, you want to stay in the know, I talk right. to my list first. They are the first ones to hear everything. They're the first ones to know everything. That's where the conversation is. And oh, by the way, um, I love getting email. So anytime that you're on my list and you want to sit there and reach out to me, just hit reply to any email that you've ever gotten. Right. I check every single one. Um, that's one of the bigger things that, as well is that, you know, we, we build the list, we send all this crap out, somebody does reply, and it just goes off into the darkness. It goes into the nether realms of, of you know, wherever. It goes in that big, um, what was the beast in the Return of the Jedi that the Boba <laughs> Fett got eaten by? Um, it, that's where it goes. I mean, that's essentially what people view that when you're on a list, that's what you view. And if you want to, if you want proof, just look at the, all the lists that you're on. Look at all the shit email. Yeah, yeah. Say that it, right. It's a family show, yeah. but you know, we allow we allow three yeah. three okay. uh, four letter words yeah. before we uh we send somebody over there to, to well, shut you're, down you're, your camera. See now I'm so. Sarlacc pit <laughs> experiential ed says Sarlacc pit is where it goes. <laughs> there you go, the Sarlacc pit. I knew somebody was gonna come up with it, and I'm I'm ashamed that I did I couldn't so think of that. What, right what is the key to um, writing good emails or a good newsletter or good email content that makes somebody want to open 
a David Vaughn email compared to the 97 other ones they get from lists they subscribe to because they wanted that 10 page ebook, which was going to give them the secret to making a million dollars this week. <laughs> I don't know. Why should I know that? You get any opens? You must be That's doing something really right now. That's actually a really good question. Um, and it's really, really, really simple. So if you're a coach, um, you, you may want to just mute me at the moment um, because I'm probably going to go against everything that most coaches say. I want you to write your email to your list like you're writing to a person. So just like you're having a conversation, because that's all it is. We get so caught up in trying to make everything so much bigger than what it actually really is. Um, I, you know, I social this, social that, social, uh, you know, uh, all the different social networks that have popped up and now the live networks that are popping up. It, it, it's, it doesn't matter. We had social networking in the 70s and 80s. It was called talking. And that's all you're doing. You talk with somebody, not at them. Treat them like you would want to be treated and have a conversation. Um, make sure that what you're talking about is consistent. And by consistent, I don't mean be the same old boring rhetoric time after time after time after time. What I mean is be consistent with your tone, be consistent with who you are as a person, um, be consistent with how you represent whatever it is that you're serving the community that you're doing. You know, so if you're, if you're, um, um, if you're a, uh, a food blogger guru person um, and you start talking to me about um, affiliate sales on Amazon, I ain't got nothing to do with the other thing. And you're not an authority in that. You know, we, it's, it's not a brand. And I get that type of stuff all the time. Um, have respect for your list. Don't treat them like they're stupid. Don't, don't fall into these, these little, um, in fact, I was looking at this earlier today, um, the, these FOMO mails uh, that go out. Uh, I got an email earlier today. I can't even remember who it was from. It was that important. Um, and I didn't open it because I, I wasn't really interested at the time of, of opening it. Oh, I know. Um, and then within an hour, I get another email from the same person. And this is a big, big brand. Um, and it's 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 uh, uh, sitting there saying, oh, I, you know, I made a mistake. Here are the correct links or some proofread your shit right, right. <laughs> before you send it out. You know, oh my gosh. Now, there's um, a big influencer who a lot of people follow. Who for some reason I'm on his email list. I don't even remember subscribing. Um, but I've never actually opened an email from him because he puts things like emergency in an email yep. header. I'm sorry, but when I see that pop up, I'm not happy. Like if I see that pop up before I see that it's from one of these email lists that I don't respect, I first think like, what the hell's going on? Something with a family member, what like emergence, like that's just really disrespectful to the people on your list. And so I, if it was worth the five, se if it was worth the five seconds to me, I'd go to his, his list and unsubscribe, but it's not even worth the time to do that. <laughs> That's on, you know, and that that type of response right there is is actually worse uh, to businesses and our list than the unsubscribe. At least if I unsubscribe, you took an action right. um, that I'm no longer relevant to whatever's going on in your life. If if you just let me go into the nether realms of of you know trash, um, one you're costing me money on most services. Um, because you're a subscriber, right. so you're counted for something. Now it may not be a lot, but it's still something. Um, but you I mean, it's, it's your just list of people like, who are actually going to open your in, emails, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's it's like having false numbers. It's like somebody coming across to me and saying, "Well, you know, um, oh, I've got ten thousand subscribers, or I've got twenty five thousand subscribers," and I go, "Well, that's great. What's your open rate?" Well, I don't know, or. 10%, which is the industry average, right. um, which is really, really low. Okay. If you've got 10,000 people on there and your open rates, 10%, um, well, that's a thousand people. 
And then I asked the, the next question, which is the real burden. Well, that's great. What's your conversions? That's the bigger one, right? And they're like, well, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> they're like, well, I, you know, I, I didn't, I wasn't selling anything or, or something. I'm like, yes, you were. Um, you just, you know, evidently don't realize that you were. And, and But people think, that, you know, well, I don't want to always be salesy or anything. like. And that's one thing, you know, don't always be pitchy, pitchy, salesy, salesy, slimy, slimy. Um, I, you know, and be upfront when you are being right. pitchy, pitchy, salesy, slimy, slimy. And we're all, we all have to be, you, pitchy, you should pitchy, always have some kind of call to action on your, um, on your email or no. Yeah, I mean, even if you're not yeah, selling I sit something there and, and I'm like, Hey, tweet this out, right. um, reply to me and let me know what's going on. Um, all these different types of things. And, and, you know, we assume that people are going to do that. <laughs> We assume that people are going to reply. No, we are all, you know, dumb. Right, right. Um, and we don't know that you want to hear from us, or we don't know that it's real, or, or you know, whatever other excuse. So, uh, you know, lead us by the hand, step by step, as you walk us along. If you want me to make a call to action, put the call to action in there. Now, getting back to a point I made earlier, if you have a call to action, and somebody takes a charge of it, please don't let them go off into nothing. <laughs> <laughs> Show some kind of love. Um, if it's a tweet, favorite the tweet. If you are so freaking busy, and I would love to meet these people. I, I could probably count <laughs> on two hands um, the, the super busy people I know. And on one hand, I could justify five of them. Yeah, you know, I could justify five of them. And, but they have a staff. And they have means. I know how their their workings are because I've talked to them about it. I'm like, well, what do you do? Um, you know, I'll, I'll just don't let them go off into nothing. Anyway. Right, right. So do you have, like, when you look back on emails you've sent, do you have some, like, you can say, okay, this was a formula that succeeded and this was one that didn't, like... Can you can you identify why certain ones or you just sometimes you're scratching your head like I thought this was great no. or, you know, you have like the points that you can look at and go, OK, I did this wrong or I did this right. Like, what are some of the things people do right that lead to opens and things that people are doing wrong when nobody's opening their emails? Um, well, that's really tough for everybody, but I can guarantee um that if you treat whatever you're sending out to your list, um, and again, email list. Now, I, you know, and Ross said when when I talk about lists, I'm, I'm talking about um, email lists. But I mean, there are other right. lists out there, but all your other lists should filter down to your email list. And let me make sure this point gets across as to why I say this, because I've had the um, oh, well, you know, I've, I've got YouTube subscribers and I do fine. I don't need an email list. Facebook, uh, you know, I'm on Facebook. That's where everybody's at. Um, yeah, you and one point and them and 1.7 billion other people, um, I, you know, or Twitter or, or anything like that. Um, the only conversation that you can control is your email list. Right. You can't you can control that over your website unless you have your own server on your own uh data farm, um, uh, you know, with your own internet that you own and you maintain and all this other type of stuff, um, things can happen. Um, uh, social, nobody controls it. If you are leaving, if you are leaving the fate of your existence up to social, you might as well count yourself as already out of business. Right. Facebook can change their that algorithm out. at any time. And by the time you catch up, to how to get to those people, it's too late. Or Change just start algorithm. charging so much for um, it that you can't afford it, right? I mean... <laughs> Change algorithm, charge, uh, you know, the price gets increased from free to whatever. Um, or, uh, you know, the business just decides to sit there and pivot. Meerkat, uh, you know, let's look at live video. Meerkat, um, MeV, and the two seconds that existed. Oh, MeV's not um, around anymore. <laughs> I, I have no idea. I, I gave up. I, I, I spent a day on it, thought it was sort of fun and never went back because there's 18 other things to do. <laughs> Maybe it was introduced to me. I thought it was really neat. Buggy is all get out. 
And I sat there and reached out to him and I said, you know, listen, you've got a lot of great potential. I think when you update your app and get rid of these things, I'll be back. Well, that was January, which is when they came out. Um, and I haven't heard anything since. And it's since been deleted on my app and, and don't care about it and don't really care about it anymore. Um, Blab, which is a platform some people know and some people don't know. Um. I think this crowd's um, probably heard of Blab. People built up everything, uh, and 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 you know, was everything was going wonderful, and then Blab shifted gears, um, you know, <laughs> and, and that and Blab just and Blab happened. That that that's as simple as it. But I know that there were people, and that was it. And I, you know, I I was on that platform for quite a bit. And I say the same thing all the time, that you need to be consistently building your list. You need to constantly be building your list. You need to constantly be offering the opportunities to people to get on your list. Now, if they don't take the opportunity to get on there and all of a sudden you can't find them on there anymore, then that's their fault. Probably. It might be your fault in the way that you that you pitch something. But, um, I, you know, these things can just sit there and 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 change. Now, getting back to your question about um, open rates, what are people doing right? What are people doing wrong? I, you know, until I, if I were, unless I were to look at it and really kind of get it in depth, I could give a very broad overview. But I can tell you, it probably falls within three areas, and the three areas actually have the same thing to do with each other. So, to make sure that I don't say something out of whack and these are really really technical terms so make sure you get out your pen or your pencil or whatever um, and 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 get ready to write okay the promise the stuff the price i know that's really technical um, but those are the three areas that things usually fall off and we get very defensive and and puffy chest and and look like gorillas walking around saying well, it's none of that it's my list if nobody's opening your emails it ain't your list it's you <laughs> um now for me yeah and usually what happens is i go back after i sit there and whine and complain and get all puffy chest i come back to reality and I look at those three areas and I see how far off I've gone from who I am and what it is that I have and what it is I do to serve the community that I serve. And usually it's the promise. Somewhere along the ways, I've gone way off board. And this has happened to me and it's happened to other people. And it's hard to admit, especially to ourselves. But, um, you know, Th those are usually the three areas. Uh, the promise is, is a real easy area to sit there and 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 stay within the realm, as long as you know what the promise is. A lot of people don't know what the promise is. And the promise is, um, it, it's, you know, what's the outcome or result that you, the reader, will get? Um, the other area that kind of falls into that is it's a promise to yourself. I promise to treat everybody on my list as an individual. I promise to write as if I'm speaking to you, not you all, not y'all, not you guys, whatever you want to say. Um, <laughs> dear list. <laughs> yeah. Dear John. Dear, sub dear valued subscriber. <laughs> and et cetera. <laughs> um, Ladies and gentlemen. Yeah. Don't you love those types of, uh, uh, and, and, and this will show you the real, the real winners out there. And I've, I've gotten it more times than I can count. Um, some people, I, and you know, there's, there's, you can listen to whoever you want. Uh, when you're building your list, I tell people you need to ask for two, two fields, uh, name, and you can whittle that down to first name if you want. I just put name. A lot of times I get the first name. Sometimes I get the full name, um, an email. I love coming across the list where it's just the email that they want, you know, because they were too lazy to actually go look at the MailChimp form that they were uh, building. Um, and so the first email that you get is dear blank. Or dear and my email address or something. Oh, my God. Uh, you know, take the time to look into it. Now, it's okay that, that happens. Just figure out how to fix it. 
and work it and go it along. And that's the, you know, that's the beautiful thing about everything that's digital and marketing today is that it costs us so little, right? At least it should, um, compared relative to where your business is at, um, compared to what traditional advertising or, and <laughs> I, 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 I have an issue with digital advertising or digital media because we never had analog advertising. It was just advertising. Um, but we want to sit there and skin it with a buzzword. So digital media, um, it's so much cheaper and it's so much more interactive. It, you know, they're not yellow page ads. They're not billboard signs. They're not TV commercials. They're not all these other things that we've had, but that's how we treat a lot of this stuff. And right. so, uh, you know, a lot of people treat their list like their TV viewers, cold, dead, and unresponsive. And I don't care what you have to say, or if you like it or not, I paid for this spot to get in front of you. And that could lead into the next thing. Right. And that's right. all social email. Stop and shut up. Open your ears and listen and respond. And it doesn't have to be to just your list. It could be to, uh, you know, whoever go do a random Twitter search on something that you're interested in. And don't tweet what you know you think about instantly. Go find what other people are talking about. Join their conversation. Have a conversation. Build your list. Very practical question. What list building tools do you use? Do you use MailChimp, AWeber? Which which one of the, the different tools out there do you recommend? Um it, 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 I guess it really depends on where you are. So my first answer is you need something. And if all you can afford is the free account of MailChimp at this time, and there's nothing wrong with that, go sign up for MailChimp. Um, they've been around for a long, long time. they are things that you do get, things that you don't get, but it's a great place to start. And at least it will allow you to build your list. Every overnight sensation that took eight to 10 years that I've talked with. Did you catch that? Yes. Every overnight sensation that took eight to 10 years. Right. Um, that's they're only I, an overnight that's sensation. Why I'm, that's why they're, I'm fairly unimportant. Right. The, uh, the, the only reason why they're really an overnight sensation is that most people didn't recognize them until they became a success. Yeah. <laughs> so to most people, they were an overnight success. But in fact, there was eight to nine years before that, that they were plugging away, building their list, posting on social making connections, making relationships, all that. Were, you know what they were doing? And and I talk to people about this all the time is, um, you know, for those of us who are, are, are not as fit or healthy um, as we'd like to be. And, you know, we, so we decide, well, we're going to go to the gym. And when we walk in the gym, we instantly want to be able to bench press 500 pounds and leg press 500, you know, squats or whatever, 500. And we instantly want to be able to do 200 uh, push-ups and all this type of stuff. Go into the gym and try that. You're going to be dead because there's your body's going to stop you. It's not, it, but we we sit there and, and, and don't treat the rest of the stuff. All you're doing is training. All you're doing is learning what doesn't work and what you need to work on and what other people want to know. And, and so you're just training as you go along. Trust me, the reason you haven't made it is you're not ready yet. You haven't gotten your training to the point of when you're there. And when you get there, you'll know it. And then guess what? It's going to be a whole nother level. Um, and for every level, there's another devil. As, <laughs> as uh, um, um, Tyree says, Tyree Gibson. And he, somebody else probably said it, but he's the first one I heard say it. Um, what type of list building tools specific to email? Uh, convert. Uh, currently, I'm using ConvertKit uh, as my primary, and I have AWeber as my backup. Um, MailChimp's great, um, but ConvertKit and AWeber, they're low-end services. I mean, you're talking less than 30 bucks a month. Yeah. Um, ConvertKit, I think, is 29 um, and and AWeber, I think, is 19 now if I'm not mistaken. They used to be a lot cheaper, but I mean, you get a lot more with that. Now, if somebody were to come to me and say, just give me the, the, uh, you know, uh, tell me which, which service that I should use. I'm going to say convert kit. 
Um, and the reason I'm going to say ConvertKit is because ConvertKit treats subscribers completely differently than everybody else. So the way most of the email services work is that if Ross comes and signs up on my homepage mm-hmm. and um, then I've got him as a sub- subscriber in what's called a, 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 um, a, a list, a, a category, um, not a category, but a list that that's, uh, you know, he's in this funnel and it's called the homepage sign up funnel or whatever it is you want to call it. So they segment and then if everything. If I sit there and I have um, a webinar coming up, and Ross wants to be a part of that, well, he's got to sign up. Well, I can get Ross on that list as well. But now Ross is on Ross. Ross is on two lists, and he's counted as two separate subscribers, even though he's the same person. Now, how does ConvertKit treat Ross differently? For me, Ross comes and signs up on my homepage and. and I have it on ConvertKit, and that's fine. He does that. And then Ross wants to, and he gets tagged. I can sit there and tag Ross with how he signed up on my list, homepage sign up, or homepage left column. I can get very, very fancy with it. And then I've got got the same webinar coming up. Ross can go sign up for it. And when he does, it'll tag him. It'll sit, and I can tag it with whatever I want. I could, you could create the tag. You can make it really, really long. I know people look right. Sentences for tags, um, but that's okay. That's what works for them, I, you know. But webinar one or or webinar on list building or uh, webinar to you know whatever it is, and Ross is then listed there. Well, what how, what's the difference? Well, one, I'm not getting charged twice for Ross. Yay for me. Um, but two, um, I can sit then sit there if I need to talk to the list of people that joined up on the webinar. Um, then I can do that. If I want to talk to the list of people that t- joined up on the webinar, but also signed up originally for my list on the homepage sign up or the homepage left column sign up, I can actually tag it that way. So it gives you a lot of maneuverability and a great amount of functionality. Now, there's other services out there that use tagging as well. And I'm a huge fan of tagging and tag categories. Um, Infusionsoft is one. I know people in Infusionsoft. Some people call it confusion soft because it's like a super powerful engine. Um, there's a lot of stuff that it can do, and there's actually a lot of stuff that it can't do. Um, I run a couple of infusion soft accounts now for for corporate. Um, I, I know people that have gotten off of it and gone mm-hmm. to services like ConvertKit, and we're talking people that have hundred thousand plus subscribers on there. And it's just you know it, it depends on where you are and what you're doing. Um, plus. Confusion soft costs, you know, a lot more money. Um, Entreport's out there. Uh, the only service that I, I push people away from, and I always will, is constant contact. Mm-hmm. It sucks. Unless you want all your emails to go to somebody's spam folder all the time, um, <laughs> you know, don't go to constant contact ever, 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 ever. ever. So. I put them in the same category as Facebook Live. Video. You think ConvertKit is for everybody, or you think that's something to step up to once you get your list to a certain point? If you can stomach the the dollar figure, twenty nine bucks, like I say, I think a month, um, I would start there because uh, it's just better to start there. There's no point in trying to learn something else. There's no point in trying to learn Mailchimp. I, you know, again, it's it's what you can afford to do. And I understand sometimes that's just not there and that's fine um, if you're not there. But if you can afford that, and, and I'm talking about, I know a lot of people, I've run across a ton of people who sit there, well, I can't afford that. And they are paying uh, for, uh, you know, um, uh, not to name lead pages, but, uh, you know, a lead pages type service. They're paying, uh, you know, a, a stupid amount of money uh, for 15 different websites. Um, you know, they've got all these other things that they're paying for that honestly they could probably strip and whittle down. Um, you can afford ConvertKit. It's a, it's a great service. Alexander S. compared to AWeber. AWeber is my backup. Um, AWeber and, and AWeber is coming along. Um, in fact, they're beta testing or they have been beta testing tags and the tagging feature. Um, my biggest problem with AWeber, and one of the reasons that I got or, or shifted off of them, uh, was the fact that they they don't have a way to have a single subscriber and multiple tags. Mm-hmm. 
they have a way that I can communicate with the subscriber. But if Ross comes again, if Ross were to come to the homepage and sign up, he's a subscriber. If Ross then goes to sign up for my webinar, he's another subscriber. So I'm paying too much for Ross. Right. And trust me, I don't want to pay too much for Ross. No. I love Ross. But but he's not going to no open your email anyway. So what's the um Right. Right. So, um, or my staff, yeah. yeah, Terry Johnson asked what happened to A. Weber. They used to be the favorite. Um, and they still are. Uh, it's, it's just, you know, they kind of got, I think, complacent. Um, but they do what they do. And again, I'm not, I'm not downing on them. Mm -hmm. the, 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 you know, the model that I'm talking about, one, is not unique to them. Right. MailChimp does it. Um, a, a lot of services do it. Um, it's just somebody saw that it wasn't right mm -hmm. and they figured out a way to do it a little better differently. And I like it. And um, so, so that's all that it really was. I mean, it's, I hear a lot of people down on MailChimp. Um, I, you know, MailChimp went through a couple of years ago, uh, a really huge shift and what they would, what they uh, said was allowable email through their services, and and you know if if you didn't if you fell into a category of a certain type of email, they were going to you know pretty much shut your account off, and people just went up in arms. Well, you know it's because most of them were sending out crap anyway, mm -hmm. and that's who they were trying. To, you know, Mailchimp got got a bad rep. Um, so and and Aweber, like I say, I, I still give Aweber a tiny amount of money every single month. Um, just as a backup. Now, when I say that email is the only conversation that you control, um, can something happen to your email service provider to where you cannot communicate with your which list? Is why you keep a which is loop. why you keep everybody in AWeber as well. Well, it, it, that's one. Um, but I actually just export my list. I, I, I set up timers in my calendar and I do it religiously. Um, it, you know, if, if I had to, I would sit there and copy and paste everybody into the BCC and send out a notice. Um, but I, you know, at least you expect to see emails from me. Um, and, and it won't be a big shock and a big surprise. How so. often should you write to your list? Is there a too often? Is there a not often enough? I think I'm in the not often enough category, as you probably know from subscribing. I, you know, I'm actually going through experimenting with that a little bit this summer. Um, I, 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 well, in fact, July was 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 absent, um, and and the funny thing is, I started getting emails saying asking me if everything was okay, um, and I said, yeah, you know, everything. Anyway, I, you know, it it got to a point of trying to figure some things out. Uh, in, in a direction and, and where I wanted to go. And I didn't want it to be robotic and I didn't want to start turning people off. And I noticed a little bit of dip in the last couple of emails that I had sent in my open rate. Um, and so, you know, hardcore me, I had to go back. I know people that um, they may send out an email once every three months, once every four months. Um, I know one person, he's gone as long as once every six months, and even he admitted that was way too long. Um, but when people receive his email, they open it. <laughs> the reason that they open it is because they know what he's got to share is awesome. So that's the one key thing right there. Make sure what you're sharing is worthy of being shared. Make sure it's right awesome. in that sense. It's like you know people who jump on live streaming because they go, oh, it's been a few days since I've been on. They have nothing actually worth saying, or or mm -hmm. don't even want to be on, and it shows. But it's like, oh well, I haven't done this in a few days. I've got to do it. And the same thing with an email, right? I mean, don't send out an email without a purpose to it and without something and, worth and sharing. It's got that, yeah, you know, I so I've always kind of well, I haven't always been, but I've I've grown to the point. I've I've worked it long enough that I became a type of person that. Um, I would, I know when I need to send something out mm -hmm. and when I'm sending something out, uh, it's, it, it it's because I really want to share it. It's, it's going to fall into one of the three categories. I'm either going to entertain you. I'm going to educate you, or I'm going to empower you. Um, and those are the three areas that I always want to make sure that I'm, I'm fitting my stuff in. Um, I never want to send out, um, Hey, this is how you become an Amazon affiliate. <laughs> 
and the benefits of it. Unless the reason I'm doing it is because I get a lot of questions. Now, that's the other thing is when I get and that's listening. Um, when people are sitting there like, hey, what do you, you know, how do you do this? Or, or what is it? You know, I see you're doing this. What do you do? And how do I get, you know, all that type of stuff? You know, but then that's a request. You are actually replying to what is, your community is saying. Teach us, damn it, stop keeping all the money. Um, and I'm uh, squirrel. Uh, can we rewind? Yeah. <laughs> um, you know, we'll take it out of the West Coast version. There we go. There we go. Sorry, West Coast peeps. Uh, I know it's early for you. Um, there you go. I was really on a good spot and I really went way off topic there. That's me, though. If you know me, that's, that's all right. That's, um, I'll, in the, in the I'll come back. I'll come back it, to wouldn't it, be, so. it wouldn't be a David Vaughn interview if I didn't ask you what you're hearing, what's going on with YouTube, what's going on with Facebook Live. Is Facebook Live going to give us two people on camera? I know you don't like the platform, but just that's you know something that's on everybody's mind youtube was supposed to come out with youtube connect i haven't heard anything about that lately that was originally people were talking about that coming out in may mm -hmm. what what do you know what are you hearing what are your sources telling you well yeah so youtube connect is that, as far as i know it's not going to be called youtube connect um so we got a lot of rumors um based off a a that nobody has ever seen um, sketchy email. Mm -hmm. um, we knew YouTube was was going to do something mobile and live video or live streaming. If you have to go that route, um, they've already released it to a select golden few, and they did this back at VidCon. Um, Alex Wasabi, North Carolina native Alex Wasabi, who's got like 10 million freaking YouTube subscribers. And um, he can be pretty funny sometimes and then pretty annoying others. Um, he actually does it every Wednesday. Um, it's coming. I think that they're waiting for, I think Android's going to receive it first. So Android peeps, be happy. Um, uh, of course, I could be wrong. It could get released on both platforms at the exact same time. I think what they're waiting for is the new um, Android uh, OS, Nougat, I think is what it's called, um, to come out, and then they're going to release it. The fact that it was supposed to be out in May, there was no hard deadline ever set. They just, you know, it was like, well, we expect this to be dropped in a few weeks, and, and you know, with – there was something coming up, and it wasn't VidCon. Maybe it was VidCon. I don't know. Anyway, they were like, well, you know, we'll probably see it then or something. Right, right. You see it when you see it. Um, YouTube's been doing video and has been doing this long enough. Um, when when they finally release it to the masses, it's going to squash um, these other services. You're going to notice such a freaking difference um, because uh, if nothing else, the peering network that YouTube already has in existence the, the way that you're able to watch your videos and have little to no um, um, lag or, 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 or increased buffer, um, no matter what your bandwidth is, um, is because of the peering network that they built. And they've been doing this since 2006. So 10, 10 years into it, they know video. Um, Facebook Live video and, and all their type of stuff. Um, well, I mean, my first response is, who cares? Fix fix it so that it just freaking works now as it is before you start introducing other stuff. Um, I've heard the rumors about two people on camera. Who knows? <laughs> I, I think, I, you know, uh, YouTube got spanked really hard um, when um, BuzzFeed was asked by Facebook uh, to stream the interview that they had with President Obama. Mm -hmm. Two minutes into the broadcast, Facebook Live video crashed. There was no coming back from it. Now, BuzzFeed, being BuzzFeed, they already had a backup plan. They just fired up YouTube Live, and then they shared the YouTube Live to their Facebook fan page. <laughs> so it was a big smack in the, 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 the rear uh, for them. Um, reminds me of a web design company that uses WordPress for their blog. 
for their company blog, even though they sell you that they've got this great blogging capability. We yeah. won't mention any names, but yeah, <laughs> it's sort of like, ah, oh, so in order to deliver that to you exclusively on Facebook, well, no longer exclusively, we had to put it on YouTube first and then drop it in. Right. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And, and that's really, that that's really what it was. It, it was just, it was kind of a, a smack in the face. Um, it, every session, um, fa- I, I, there's no way that Facebook could have been prepped for what's going on because they didn't do live video. They added it in. I think they added it in incorrectly. Now that's one thing Twitter did do right. At least they didn't try and build it themselves. They just went and bought Periscope. Um, Did they buy the better platform than Meerkat, which was the other option that was out there? I guess, Um, you know, they they probably wanted to make sure that the servers were housed in the U S and Meerkat servers were not. Um, they basically picked know. the winner. Uh, whoever they picked was going to be the winner between those. Well, two Meerkat, and, and I honestly I haven't kept up with it. I don't know what they're doing, but they just decided that it wasn't the direction that they wanted to go. Um, that they wanted to do something a little bit different, and they were they were they were having trouble. Um, they were struggling keeping viewership going. They had a very dedicated. Uh, group of broadcasters, kind of like another platform. Um, <laughs> the one we don't mention we're anymore. I'm not front about it. Uh, yeah. So anyway, Facebook's just, you know, it's really tough. And I don't care how much freaking money you got. You still have to build the infrastructure that doesn't appear overnight. And, uh, you know, it's kind of like a lot of people that um, are using uh, virtual uh, broadcast systems, open broadcast systems. So OBS is one of them. Um, Wirecast would be another one. It's just, you got to pay for it. Um, but these people are using these on their, on their main computer. So they don't build a dedicated system, video cards and, and enough Ram. And that's all it does and, and everything. And, you know, they're looking for the exact same type of, um, ability as, uh, those that have uh, production equipment um, and dedicated systems and, and you know, expensive video cameras that shoot 6 and 8K and, uh, you know, all this type of stuff. Um, it, it's the same type of thing as what I see Facebook doing. They're just trying to be in the game because they're afraid of missing out. Right. I don't think anyone would have really cared uh, if Facebook Live video had had not been introduced yet. I think people would rather have a great experience instead of a eh, or a really crappy experience, which is what most of us have when we watch stuff. I, I can't stand it. I, I love to try and watch people, but as soon as you lag or buffer, that's it. I'm done. Well, thank you very much for coming on, David. It's been fun. Theprofitablelist.com, David Vaughn. 